Monster Hunter Rise was released on the Nintendo Switch back in March of 2021 to massive critical acclaim. Just under two years later, it's out on Xbox Game Pass for console, cloud, and PC. It is an excellent port built off of the original Steam port that hit exactly a year ago. Its precursor, Monster Hunter World, was on Game Pass for a long time, so it may be familiar to many of you watching this. Just know, I think that Monster Hunter Rise is better than it in every single way. So let's go over it in the Xbox Era Review. Monster Hunter Rise tasks you with fighting increasingly difficult monsters, either solo or with up to three friends, through two different leveling paths. Story-wise, the game is set in a small village that suffers from a once-in-a-generation rampage. During this event, the monsters who lurk throughout their homeland will go crazy cuckoo nuts and attack as one big angry dragon bear thing feasts upon all the other frenzied creatures, and become stronger and stronger. Your job is to become strong enough yourself to stop the rampage by hunting monsters, carving them up, and using those pieces to craft new weapons and armor. This cycle is the heart of the game. To see the main story, you'll have the village quests, which must be completed solo. They're tuned for one player, and seeing the credits roll will take you roughly 25 to 30 hours or so at the most. The multiplayer side of things are the Gathering Hub missions. These missions can scale for up to four players total, and will have you facing off against all the same monsters you'll see while playing solo, but they'll have far more health and do slightly more damage. It is frustrating to have one path completely locked away from co-op play, but it is far better than the odd system that Monster Hunter World used. Instead of having to see a certain cutscene in the middle of a mission, and then being able to invite people in mid-hunt, you can just gather together right at the start and work on your gathering hub leveling path with far less aggravation. Those mission types come in a few varieties. The main ones are, of course, the hunts, in which you have a main target in a specific zone. They are normally joined by a few of the other main monster types, and you'll have a 50-minute time limit to slay or trap your target. If you're good enough, you can go in and take out all three monsters, though I found myself focusing on the main target every time. The monsters will fight each other, which is a ton of fun to be a part of, and we'll get into a bit more later. The other mission types include the new Tower Defense Rampage mode, which is terrible. Rampage missions find you setting up a very basic series of defense countermeasures in a tower defense style game, whereas constant waves of powerful monsters attack and it's just not fun. It feels blatantly at fair at times and is generally a slog to get through. The fact that a rampage is how you advance to the next hunter rank each time is one of the game's only major faults. Finally, you have the gathering or delivery missions. In Gathering, you simply go around the map, finding specific objects, and delivery is exactly what you'd think. There is also an exploration mode that can be fun to use to try and learn an area's layout, as it never seems to change outside of very specific missions for each zone. And those zones cover most of your standard biome types, like forests, swamps, ice areas, lava caverns, and so on. One nice change is that there is only one area per zone, and you do not have to constantly travel and track monsters in between them. Your new owl pet, the Kahoot, is the in-game lore reason why you'll now know where every monster is in each zone at all times. One of my least favorite parts of Monster Hunter World was the constant chase of an enemy because I'm pretty impatient. In Rise, your Kahoot lets you know where every other major monster in the zone is at all times. Though it won't always know what type of monster it is until you've defeated it at least once. It's a huge quality of life improvement that I greatly appreciated, and there are a ton of them in Rise. While playing solo, you'll now have two companions fighting alongside you, the Palico and the Palamute. They're a cat and dog combo that you can name, gear up, and customize the appearance of, and I love them. They have different build types, such as healing cats that build up fruit that will fill an area with life-restoring mist, and you can give your dog a chain whip that they'll attack like the maniacal mutt that they are with. You can also ride your Palamute by holding down the B button while not in combat mode to get around an area faster. While on their back, you can even gather items and do light attacks. The village hub area is broken up into multiple zones, with a buddy zone being where you can hire more and more Palamutes and Calicos. 
Once you have your small furry army, you can send your meowcenaries to gather items and boss drops for you. There are really just a ridiculous amount of systems in this game, and it does a great job of slowly introducing you to each of them while also being easy enough early on that you can just ignore certain ones until you feel more comfortable. The other areas are the Smithworks, where you upgrade your gear and get your village quests, items, and more. And as always, there's an eatery where you'll find Bunny Dango, a weird gelatinous treat that will give you up to three buffs of your choosing per hunt. You have a home as well, where your cat butler can customize things, and all of it can be fast-traveled between at lightning speeds. On the Switch version, the loading wasn't terrible, but at 10 to 20 seconds or more sometimes, it is destroyed by the current gen console's SSDs. Most loads, either fast traveling or going into a mission, never felt like they reached two seconds. Sometimes they felt instant, and the Windows Store version was similar. My Gen 3 NVMe SSD and decent gaming rig was able to get into everything at a, even faster than console sometimes. Because in the end, graphically, this is still a Switch game, and that smaller memory footprint helps in making this one of the fastest loading things I've ever played. There is truly a ridiculous amount of mechanical stuff going on both outside and in each mission, and breaking it all down, including the vast number of monsters, weapons, and more, would take 15,000 words on their own. Just know that the game does an excellent job of teaching you at a moderate pace, and I never felt overwhelmed during its incredibly satisfying combat. Anyone who played the series before will have the combat feel instantly familiar. For those of you who haven't, this is a mix of fast and very deliberate weapons designed to keep you on your toes without feeling overly difficult early on. All the classic Monster Hunter weapons return and operate pretty similarly to World. I mainly use the Longsword and Insect Glaive, and I felt immediately at home with both. The biggest change in Rise are the Wirebugs. You have two of them by default and they'll empower all of your main movement and special move abilities. While your weapon is stowed away, you can at any point hold the left trigger and then use the right trigger to throw out a bug that then pulls you forward like a slingshot. And while you normally start out with two, you can find a third temporary bug during the missions, and I can't imagine playing a Monster Hunter game without them now. The flow of combat and even just exploration is so much faster than before, and the extra platforming available makes exploring each zone far more enjoyable as well. Depending on the weapon, you'll have various wirebug-powered special moves, too. My favorite was using the bug to pull myself forward as I did a double slash with my longsword. There is a training area tied to the buddy zone to test out and discover all the moves the game has to offer, and you'll need to for the higher difficulties. The movement and combat feel tight, though there is no lock-on for the monsters. Tapping the left bumper will change your aim towards your current main target, but only for a split second. It's more a reorientation and not any type of actual lock-on mechanic. Preparing for each hunt will quickly be taught to you, and once you're in mission, there is a hut you can visit should you want to change your gear, eat a meal, or replenish your usable items. The system for cycling through your currently equipped usable item can be a bit awkward to navigate at first, as you'll need to hold the left bumper while using the face buttons for left or right. I did get used to all of the UI quirks eventually, but I did have a lot of practice from Monster Hunter World. The monsters themselves are a visual treat, with really good looking textures but incredible animations. Learning their patterns never felt cheap, and the difficulty spikes were manageable thanks to the gear you're gifted for free at the start. The credits will roll after you reach Hunter Rank 5 in the Village Questline, which took me just about 35 hours. And that's just the start though, as a full playthrough can easily break 100 hours as you push the higher ranks and face the game's true final boss. Most hunts took me roughly 20 minutes or so as I focused almost always on the main target, and having two monsters run into each other while you're out on a hunt will most likely see you take on this game's version of mounting. Once a monster is stunned, you can use your wire bugs to easily climb onto its back and take control of it. You'll use a mix of light and heavy attacks while dodging, which lets you quickly knock pieces off of any other monsters. If you manage to do it while solo, you can press X and have the monster run into a wall for massive damage over and over again. It's a lot of fun and keeps people from focusing on constantly trying to get up above and mount enemies as they did in World. Monster Hunter Rise looks like the prettiest Xbox 360 game of all time. The geometry of each stage, the level of detail as you move, and some of the texture work is indicative of the portable hardware it was initially made for. 
I still think it looks great overall though running on a Series X or a PC, due in large part to an excellent art style and nearly flawless performance. There are a series of surprising to see graphical options on the Series port as well. Things like shadow distance and texture quality and more are there to be tweaked as you desire, but even after maxing everything out, the game still felt like it was either locked or close to 120 FPS on my console, and it consistently ran well over 200 frames per second on my PC. It just always feels smooth, and I'm not sure I ever once felt it hitch during combat, which was a huge factor in keeping fights feeling fair. One area that really blew me away though was the soundtrack. Every track in this game is great, both those that were fully orchestral and the ones with vocals. You will be in town a lot, and each area is like musical bliss. It's not a genre of music I normally care for, but it's gorgeous and counters the way too cheery and cheesy mood of the game in a way that I needed. You also have three choices for the dialogue, Japanese, English, and their own made up simlish type language. The last is I think the best to match the weird place and time vibes of the setting. The quality of the English voice acting is okay, but the lines are so unbelievably cheesy that it grew grating on me immediately. And also, your character talks to themselves and their buddies non-stop during missions by default, but thankfully you can lower that in the game's vast array of options. Bugwise, I didn't run into anything outside of all the endemic life buzzing around each zone during a mission. This game is going on roughly two years of support from Capcom, and it shows with both a content-rich and technically competent package being released here. Wrapping things up, Monster Hunter Rise benefits from a tighter focus and massive quality of life improvements over its predecessors. The performance is excellent and your hunts are more enjoyable than ever. With it releasing day one on Game Pass, it's a world worth visiting by yourself or with some buddies.